Oh man, the fruits here are so sweet and delectable. They're definitely a cut above others I've tried. According to my research, this fruit is sourced exclusively from a farmer that plays classical music for the plants in his orchard. He serenades his crops? Oh, I, I saw something like that on TV once. They were saying beautiful music does something to enhance the flavor. Wow, so the key to deliciousness is music? <laughs> now that's bougie. That's just like the concept of showering a flower with loving words while watering it, to help it grow more fully. Look, but if you're the kind of person who tells each plant, you're gonna turn out so beautiful. You know, you probably don't have much discretion in the first place. Well, that negates the whole premise, doesn't it? Yeah, but if someone with a nurturing personality cultivates a flower, wouldn't it bloom better regardless? Hmm, guess it would. So the reason these fruits are delicious is because some farmer out there loved his plants enough to try playing them music? Well, that might be oversimplifying things. Studies actually suggest the vibrations from classical music have the potential to stimulate photosynthesis in plants. Stimulate photosynthesis? In other words, sound waves can directly enhance a fruit's development. Man, the depth science is reached nowadays. Oh, that does it. For the next cucumber harvest, let's put on some hard rock. Oh, heck yeah. Those powerful vibes might produce some super juicy cukes. Ugh, I'm sure glad I'm not one of your plants. I never really noticed it before, but it sure is a pretty little cafe. Yeah, it's well managed, and there's not a speck of dust anywhere. Really has a nice atmosphere. You're very observant, Kiryu-san. Even Namba seemed to notice. Hey, give me a break. I may look like a disgruntled mess, but I do clean up after myself. Every now and then. I'll have you know I recently bought some cleaning supplies. Still right there in the box. Satisfied with the purchase alone, huh? Well, the effort's what counts, right? Got me a feather duster and everything. Oh, a feather duster? Yeah, a big stick that looks like a bird's ass at the end. Isn't that what Cinderella uses to clean? I'd rather not associate you with Cinderella, but I digress. So, did you do some cleaning? How could I? I tried waving it around, but all I did was spread a bunch of dust everywhere. Sounds to me like you almost had it. After the dust settles, you're supposed to sweep it up and then you're done. Oh, so that's how it works. <laughs> I thought the damn thing was busted. What I'd recommend is a handheld mop to clean up dirt and grime without spreading it around. Sounds like you've got this cleaning thing down. Surprised? There was a time I lived with family. And believe me, we all did our fair share of cleaning. I could teach you like I taught them. I even have a surefire technique to get rid of mold. Yes, master. Teach me your ways. And so begins the strangest apprenticeship of all time. Mm, French toast, Kona coffee, and finally, Eggs Benedict. This is unreal, guys. I've only seen fancy breakfasts like this in movies. You've got to be kidding me. You've never had this, Ichiban? Not even close. My go-to breakfast is raw egg over rice and miso soup with seaweed. Oh, why does that sound so good right now? It's actually my favorite. After all, eggs and rice were made for each other. I wonder if Hawaiian folks feel the same about French toast. <laughs> Maybe. What's your typical breakfast, Arachi-san? Bean buns and milk, right? Chitose, that's a stakeout meal. I do know my way around the kitchen. What I like is Ogura toast. You pop some bread in the toaster, top it with red bean and butter, and there's a breakfast. Oh, and I can't forget my newest obsession, frothed milk. How is that not the same as bean buns and milk? Hey, 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 were you even listening? First, red bean, then toast, and then... Ah, oh, crap, you're right. You basically described a fancy pants version of the classic stakeout meal. Ah, I did not foresee the habits for my detective days playing out like this. You know, I love fast food, because you can get a good meal almost straight away. When hunger strikes, nothing beats it.
Well, if your mind and stomach can spare the time, a sit-down place can be fun, too. Otherwise, every second feels like an eternity. Speaking of sit-down places, I was out at lunch the other day, and... Sonny, you go out to eat? I have a social life, too, believe it or not. Yeah, that's fair. I just couldn't imagine it is all. Uh, sorry, go on. Anyway, there was one of those spot the difference books next to the menu. I know they're for kids, but I was bored, so I opened it up. The puzzles were way harder than I thought. I wanted to finish it so badly, I completely forgot to eat. By the time I finished solving them all, it was dark out. You're one of those customers, aren't you? Okay, so I overdid it. But the restaurant puts them there to keep you entertained, right? Every place should have that. Maybe. But if they only got customers like you, they probably wouldn't be in business too long, huh? Thankfully, I don't think there's too many of those. I see you ordered every last coconut on the menu. Hey, man, we're in Hawaii. And nothing screams Hawaii like coconuts. That's just basics. You really associate coconuts with Hawaii. I never have, but I can see where you might get that idea. Right. On the flip side, if you were in Japan, I'm sure you'd have a whole list of iconic things you'd want to try. Mm, for example? Uh, let's see. Uh, um, sushi, for one. Uh, tempura, and Mount Fuji? Sushi, I can understand. But what does Mount Fuji got to do with food? My bad. I guess it's kind of hard to come up with examples as a native. I'm sure there's a lot out there, though. Well, there are definitely attractions that are more geared toward tourists. Things locals usually don't give a crap about. I guess you're right. But wait, does that mean you don't like coconuts? No, I eat them all the time. Even my soap is coconut-based. Whew, was about to panic there. <laughs> Jeez, Ichiban. That is the happiest I've seen you all day. Keep living your best coconut-filled life, Tomi. Uh, sure? This parfait knows what it's doing. E each layer brings on a new flavor, so even though it's huge, I never get bored of eating. Mmm, it is indeed flavorful, but it does leave the mouth rather thirsty. We should pick something to help wash it down. Hey, that sounds perfect. Kasuga, you mind ordering something for the group? You got it. Mm, something to go with parfaits. Ooh, ooh, nice one. The bitterness of the coffee offsets the parfait sweetness. Really hits the spot. Well judged, Kasuga-san. Alone this coffee, stellar. But combined with the fruit, this meal has been elevated to new heights. My thoughts exactly. I'm happy you guys are into it. Mango? Really? Fruit paired with fruit. A parfait that's par for the course, wouldn't you say? Kasuga, what have you done? Sorry, it's just the parfait was so good. I only had fruit on the brain. It's fine. It was meant to be. You could even say it's parfait. Mm. Mm. Now you got Jungi making fruit puns. Kasuga, what the hell? You broke him. Well, how is that my fault? Wait a minute, this stuff's absurdly sweet. Uh, I must admit, I was hoping for something a little more refreshing. Oh man, you're right. I didn't think this one through. It's way too sweet. Well, since it's here, we should try some. Why not? Yeah! <sighs> Ooh, so this is the kind of flavor profile they got going. Not bad at all. Sure enough, as a chef, you're always sizing up the competition, huh? <laughs> it's not like I need to, but any place that can deliver a unique flavor combo is bound to catch my interest. You can call it studious diligence on my part. <laughs> Quite an admirable mindset to have, though... I assume you could probably learn a lot more at some high-end place. I'm not too sure about that. People tend to make true discoveries in the most unexpected circumstances. For example, 
You wouldn't guess this, but a while ago I discovered that Kasuga's cooking is pretty unique in and of itself. Kasuga's? One day, he blurted out that he'd serve me a manly meal and set about making meat and potato stew. That's when he plopped in some cough drops. Ugh, cough drops? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> That's right. I thought he had to be messing with me, but he'd actually added the perfect hint of sweetness. It was delicious. I was baffled. Apparently, it was a secret technique that he learned from this lady who ran a cigarette shop back when he was a kid. Wow, so that unique flair must be Camarocho style? It's true that there's a wealth of knowledge out there beyond high society. Still, I'm surprised that you took the risk to eat a meal at Kasuga's. It's just hard to imagine. Really? It's nothing out of the ordinary. How about next time you take the plunge too, Sonny? You down for a mystery ingredient dinner party at Kazuga's? I'm gonna have to take a rain check. I still value my life. The cream lattes they have here are the best. They're all fluffy and cute, and they taste amazing. I'm a big fan myself. Every time I get one, I have to say no to running out and buying my own espresso machine. Oh, come on. You should just do it. You know, I actually did end up going to the electronics store the other day. Turns out there are lots of good ones to pick from. They are pretty popular. And of course, the price goes up with each new bell or whistle. Stuff like adjustable temperature or automatic cleaning. <gasps> Ooh, they can clean themselves? I gradually set my sights higher and higher, and before I knew it, I was getting ready to pay up. And? How much was it? 300,000 yen. <laughs> that much? Nanchan, you can afford that? Nah. I went in with a budget of 5,000, so all I could do was stare at it. Uh, that wouldn't get you any of them. Sure, but I always seem to fall into it, money or no. Oh, well. The lattes I get with you guys taste better anyway. That's enough for me. Wow, all that and you still tried to squeeze something heartfelt out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Always hated pickles as a kid, but look at me now. Chilling in Hawaii, snacking on pickles and vodka. Life really passes you by. Yeah, soon enough you'll be in an old folks home. That's not my point here. It's just an emotional experience, okay? Not sure how pickles make a guy emotional, but I think I get it. To a kid, posting up at the bar in a foreign country must be like something out of a movie. Yeah, exactly. If I could send a message to Kid Kasuga like, Yo, I'm drinking at a bar in Hawaii. I doubt he'd believe it. And yet here I am, doing just that. With a good buddy to boot. Guess life's full of surprises, too. Good buddy. Yeah. Life is full of surprises. Never would have guessed I'd wind up at some bar with a middle-aged ex-Yakuza for company. <laughs> Lay off with that shit, man. What I'm trying to say is, anything can happen. Hell, we might end up going to space together one day. <laughs> it could happen. Not long ago, my life was in total darkness. All I could do was stumble around like an idiot. But after meeting you... I feel I can finally take a few steps forward. You're a cool-ass guy, Ichiban. Yeah? <laughs> then I hope we stay buds for a long-ass time. Now, where's your glass? Ha <laughs> ha! Cheers! When you eat strawberry shortcake, at what point do you go for the strawberry on top? I save it for last. The strawberry is like the star of the shortcake. I like to have it around for as long as possible. <laughs> You've got a whole philosophy on it. You know, he's actually going about it the right way. How do you mean? Apparently, eating the strawberry last is proper etiquette. I read in a magazine that you're supposed to leave the strawberry in place and eat the cake around it to preserve the aesthetic. That way, your last bite has everything combined. People really go through all that trouble just to eat cake? I mean, I get the logic, but... I want to eat the strawberry when I damn well please. Plus, doing all that would make the cake unstable anyway, not to mention harder to eat. 
I prefer to eat the strawberry first. Is there any etiquette for that? Hey, don't ask me. Not like I made any of these rules. I think we might be taking this a bit too far. If all we do is worry about etiquette and don't enjoy the flavor, doesn't that defeat the purpose? I'd like to imagine the baker would want us to eat it how we see fit. Excellent point, Kiryu-san. And you know, there's something I've always wanted to try. It feels like now might be my moment. To take a huge bite straight out of a whole cake. Not today, Not today you, won't. you won't. Oh, nothing like snow cones to beat the heat. They're called shave ice here, but I guess they're basically the same thing. First time I've had mango-flavored shave ice. Man, this is good. I finished it in, like, one bite. Uh, you shouldn't have done that. Ow, 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 my head! <laughs> shouldn't you know better? You can't just scarf those down. Ah! Oh! What's wrong with you, Tomy? Don't tell me you got brain freeze, too. Nah, it's just my molars are hypersensitive. Ooh, ah, ha, ha, ha. So the party's weak to ice magic. Noted. The Tonkotsu ramen here has a really rich broth. It's just too good. I try to watch my salt intake these days, but I couldn't help but down the whole bowl this time. Listen to you watching your sodium. Huh? What's that at the bottom of your bowl? Huh. Oh, look at that. Let's see here. Someone wrote, Moemi Machida. Who's that? No clue. The heck is this? Apparently, this restaurant used to have a unique tradition of writing their regulars' names on their bowls. Though, I heard they stopped doing it a long time ago. So that must have been one of their old regulars. Oh, now that's a cool idea. I've seen some places that put names up on the walls, but bowls is a first for me. You never see it unless you drank down to the last drop. That's likely the goal. This place prides itself on their broth, after all. Time to see who's at the bottom of my bowl. You finish yours too, Sonny? It says... Kazuma Kiryu. Uh... Hmm. Same name. What a coincidence. Yeah, fat chance. No way there's another Kazuma Kiryu walking around Kamurocho. You come a lot here back in the day, Kiryu-san? Okay, now my turn. It's faded and hard to read. A Shinji Tanaka? Guess this place had its fair share of regulars. Though I bet Kiryu-san's the only one I'd know. That goes without saying. None of us are from Kamurocho after all. Except Kiryu-san here. And whoever this mysterious second one is. Actually, there is no second Kiryu. It's me. Well, yeah, I think we all knew that. It's funny. Something about the ramen here brought all these memories flooding back. They're almost as savory as the broth. Mmm, garlic shrimp. Now this right here is a classic. As authentic as it gets. Hell yeah! Even Namba might take a bite or two. Nanba-san doesn't like shrimp? I mean, he used to, but these days he's not a fan. Now, the chili shrimp our buddy Zhao makes is a different story. He wouldn't pass that up. Huh. Wonder what turned him off. I guess taste can be fickle, though. Like people who never eat the tail of their shrimp tempura. Oh, hell no. I always devour the whole thing. Wow, when I was a youth, I would do the same thing. One time, though, I was scarfing some down, and a tail dug right into my gums. Now, whenever I see them, I get these, like, awful flashbacks, so... <sighs> no more tail for me. Guess everyone's got their hang-ups. But you can still enjoy this garlic shrimp, Adachi-san? Oh, no, these tiny ones are no problem. It's the jumbo shrimp tails that seem to have scarred me for life. Yeah, man. Those are no joke. And since it was the first bite that did me in, I didn't even get to enjoy that meal. Though, though, I did still finish it all. What possessed you to do that? Never underestimate the power of shrimp, folks. Yes, yes sir. sir.
The sushi's always good here, but the soup is something else. Warms you up right to the bone. Isn't this place one of the older businesses in Kamurocho? Yeah, and the taste hasn't changed a bit. It's comforting that way. Same taste, same vibe, huh? I'm a fan of stuff like that, to be honest. It's nice to have a restaurant you can count on, especially on bad days. Oh, even you have bad days, Sunhi? What do you think I'm made of? I actually have quite a bit on my shoulders. <laughs> totally my mistake. Anyway, I hope our little group can be there for each other the same way this restaurant's here for us. Like, if one of us is sad, all I'd ever want is to brighten up their day. Sounds nice. But having you around, kiryu son, that's already the ultimate reassurance. Especially when we're surrounded by Yakuza. Doesn't everyone feel that way? And why are you getting surrounded by Yakuza to begin with? We always seem to get sidetracked, don't we? But I guess the fact that we can speak so freely to each other is a sign of how close we are. <laughs> then, would you say we're your new comfort soup? Come on, Kiryu-san. <laughs> feel free to slurp us up anytime. Yeah, gonna have to pass. I was wondering what fried calamari was, but I guess it's just squid rings. Mm. Oh, so plump and springy. Mm. Wonder how long ago this little fellow was swimming around in the water. <laughs> Good question. Look at us, dining on seafood by the sea. I think I like it here. Mm-hmm. Are you okay over there, Adachi-san? You haven't said a word. What's the calamari? You slather it in mayo sauce and mmm, mmm, taste bud heaven. Uh, reminds me of my golden years as a mayo lover. You a, a mayo lover? <laughs> Never knew you liked the stuff. Uh, but wait, are you saying you gave it up? I'm sure he was told to refrain during a checkup or something. No, I wouldn't talk about it so lightly, Junki. My health isn't a joke. Uh, I, my apologies. But yeah, it was during a checkup. The uh, doctor really let me have it. Oh, so you admit it. I mean, I used to douse anything and everything in mayo, but that whew, shot up my cholesterol levels, so... You know, some things you just gotta let go. Here, try some cocktail sauce. I guarantee it'll taste just as good. No! I want mayonnaise, damn it. A big, pasty pile of it. <laughs> Are you a child? With an old man's stubbornness to boot. You shut your traps! Well, we did come all the way out to Hawaii. Maybe just as once is okay. I'm sure a teeny bit of mayo won't kill you. Wait, you think so? Well, then fuck it. I'm going the whole hog on the stuff. Ah, make sure you don't relapse, dude. The doctor's gonna rip you one twice as hard if you do. Right, right, yeah. Okay, well, should that happen, would you guys stick up for me? No. Nope. I tell you, plenty of bars out there make great curry, but the stuff they make here's all time. Yeah, it's got that deep curry flavor. You can tell it's been made with love. Speaking of, one of my customers was telling me most golf clubs make a pretty good curry. You know, I've heard that too. Curry is usually on the menu at most of them, and they differ depending on the area, so it's fun to compare. Why do they even serve curry, though? Is it because everyone likes it? I'm sure that's part of it, but the main reason seems to be that you can dish out curry fast and easy and avoid any long wait times. I see. That makes sense. You know, if the curry hits different at each club, then it's probably the same for all the bars. I say we make the rounds and crown ourselves a king. Hang on. Do you have any idea how many bars there are around here? A lot more than just this one, that's for sure. Ichiban Blend is an intriguing name. <laughs> Reminds me of a certain someone. I had the same thought. It's a funny name. <laughs> well, you know, this is actually my... I really like the flavor. At first it seemed a little harsh, but then this delicate and bright aroma flooded my senses. This is a first for me. Yeah, you get a punch of bitterness, and then it leaves you with a sweet, gentle aftertaste. I've never had anything like it. Definitely. 
Apparently, this is an original blend. But it makes me wonder what the inspiration was. They've got a great vision. For sure. Oh, we should ask the owner next time. Oh, uh, sorry, Ichiban. Were you about to say something? Don't, oh, oh, no. It was nothing. <laughs> Good copy, though, right? <laughs> Are you sure? Uh, okay, then. After hearing all that, letting them know feels a bit awkward now. <laughs> Guess I gotta become a guy who can live up to such praise. Huh? You can never go wrong with chilled tomatoes. Simple and delicious. Right? And if you think these are good, I know where we can get some even better ones. Oh? Where's that? Why, that'd be none other than my very own garden. Oh, right! You said Adachi-san was teaching you how to garden. <laughs> so you grow tomatoes? Yeah. Homegrown's always the best, isn't it? You should have seen my war with the crows. A war with crows? Don't tell me you solved it with your fists. Come on, what do you take me for? I hung up CDs and stuff. The movement and the flashing freaks the little bastards out. Does that sort of thing really work? Actually, not at all. At least not for me. In fact, it seemed to encourage them. Jeez, so what'd you do about it? I tried a bunch of things, but what really sent them packing was wrenching the curtains open and glaring at them. You just stared at the birds? Yeah. Just opened the curtains and stared, in stone-cold silence. Yikes. Ooh, how creepy. I'd stop coming around, too, if I were a crow. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I'll do anything for my delicious tomatoes. Well, if I ever find myself battling crows in my own garden, I know who to call. Right on. Just say the word. I bet if Home Improvement Store sold posters of Namba glaring, that sound like hotcakes. Man, oh, nothing like having wine with your steak. What a combo. Sure thing. Personally speaking, it's like a cure-all for anything. What do you mean, cure-all? You know, like when I'm feeling down or sick, it's like meat plus alcohol cures what ails you. <laughs> Are you a pirate or something? When I catch a cold, my go-to is ginger and honey tea. It tastes great and warms me up to boot. Wow, all of you guys have a self-care routine? Well, I feel like the odd one out. Hmm. What about honey ginger steak washed down with a jug of wine, huh? The best of both worlds in one shot. <laughs> Sounds like it'll induce vomiting. Medicine is not something you tamper with, Ichiban. Yeah, <laughs> what was I thinking? Oh, the grilled lobster is a masterpiece. It smells really great, too. Sure is. But I wouldn't serve any to Ichiban. Why? Are you guys fighting? No, 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 you got it all wrong. It's just that he's got a crawfish named Nancy, and she's basically the love of his life. Well... Surely he's not that sensitive, right? Isn't there a clear difference between a pet and a meal? You would think so, but... For whatever reason, Kasuga actually took it upon himself to save Nancy from being eaten by this one homeless dude. He even traded a premium sushi set for her. So she was originally meant to be eaten? Huh. I still can't understand what was going through his head, though. You know, he even brought that crawfish with him to Hawaii. He really cherishes her that much? Then there's no way he'd accept being served a meal like this. Now that you mention it, what's Kasuga's favorite food? He seems like the type who'd eat anything. It's lobster. Well, forget what I said. That guy will eat anything. Jeez, had us worried for nothing. I can't go to Hawaii without a sip of blue Hawaii. Am I right? Oh, so good. Delish, right? And this one in particular happens to be extra special. A scene from a classic movie was shot here, and the main characters each had a blue Hawaii in hand, just like the ones we're drinking. As you can imagine, there are a ton of movie buffs who come on a sort of pilgrimage to try these. Wow, really? Oh, so this experience might be even better if I'd seen the movie? Oh, I'm gonna have to watch it and come back. 
Oh, you totally should. It has a really entertaining plot. Oh, but the one where they drink blue Hawaii's was actually the finale of a trilogy. Is that so? Then I'll just have to commit to one and two as well. Oh, wait, and then there's a spin-off TV series with a super important episode that you just can't miss. Plus, the antagonist has his own movie, so you should 100% see that if you really want to get into the lore. Oh, and that's technically a prequel. <laughs> so then... I guess this'll be my last Blue Hawaii for a while then. Ah, oh, nothing quite like warm milk when you need to unwind. I could drink it every day of my life. Hmm. What's on your mind? Come to think of it, I can't stand having to drink barium at the doctor's. Milk looks similar enough that I was just reminded of it. I was wondering why you were staring at your drink. What, were you thinking about some kind of medical test, or...? I've never taken barium. Is it nasty? Hmm, kinda. Though it's less about the taste and more like it's just really tough to swallow. I can barely get it down. So, it'd be better if they made it more palatable. Well, not necessarily. If the body was tricked into thinking it was good food, that'd activate digestion. And since that raised the stomach acid, it'd bork the test. Whoa. To be expected from Mr. X-Nurse. <laughs> right. The logic makes sense, but still tough to swallow. <laughs> Get it? Like the barium? <sighs> now that joke is what's really tough to swallow. Let's not do that again. <gasps> Jeez, that's scorching! <sighs> Nachos and lamb chops. Who knew they could get this spicy? Ooh, right? Uh, but still, there's something about Hawaii that makes it fun to eat hot food and sweat it all out. You think? You bet! It's like eating ice cream in front of a fire in the winter. Uh, but in this case, we're in a nice, air-conditioned shop eating spicy stuff. Ain't that the shit? I'm not sure I'm following. In my opinion, ice cream's way better in the summer. That might be a cultural difference. In Japan, each season comes with its own habits. Back home, we really do like eating ice cream when it's cold. You should come visit us in the winter, Tomi! Nothing's better than ice cream under the kotatsu. Uh, they're like tables with heated blankets. Heck, I'll buy you the ice cream myself. Oh, count me in. I've always wanted to try that. Kotatsus and dessert. What? You haven't tried it either? Oh, then it's a done deal. We'll go to the convenience store, pick out our faves, and warm up while chowing down. Sounds like good times to me. Count me in. Same. <laughs> Can't wait. These special pancakes are amazingly fluffy. Ugh, looks delish. Yeah, you definitely won't be hungry after those. Hey. Something wrong? I just remembered that Adachi-san ate the pudding I'd been saving. He still hasn't replaced it. Well, this is out of the blue. When did this happen? A few years ago. I had it stored in the fridge over at Survive. Really? You're still holding on to that grudge after all that time? Honestly, disputes over food are some of the most passionate. Look, a friend of mine ate another guy's cream puff while they were out on a trip. He hasn't received forgiveness to this very day. All that drama over a cream puff? It's more about courtesy among friends. If you want something, you should ask for it. Speaking of, the strawberries on Sunny's cake look scrumptious. You mind if I just... You have a death wish? <laughs> Not gonna work, huh? Not even in your dreams. Oh, Hawaii's got some amazing food, but mm, there's just something about udon from a place like this. Tastes like home, you know what I mean? Well, I get it, I guess. What about the sushi, though? That's gotta feel pretty Japanese. That's a California roll. It's fine, but it definitely doesn't taste like home to me. Oh, true. It's kind of like uh, eating at the transfer kid's house. <laughs> How is it like that? What does that even mean? Tell me, think about it. Imagine trying to find something familiar to eat in a foreign country. No, I, I get it. I guess it would be kind of comforting to eat something that you know overseas. Hey, I know! 
When you visit Japan, Tomi, I'll find us a place that makes awesome kitsune udon. Uh, thanks? Wait, look, is, isn't the point to get him something Hawaiian? Man, I love me some takoyaki. Time to dig in. Are you alright? Hold your horses, Nanchan. <sighs> all I could think about was eating the takoyaki. I totally forgot that it's piping hot. <sighs> the takoyaki from this place is so well cooked that the insides retain their heat, even when the outside cools off a little. That's how you know it's the best. Oh, I just love the crispy outside paired with the tender filling. Ah, ah, ah I love it. Uh, uh maybe swallow first? <laughs> My bad. I got carried away. But you know, it really feels like a slice of heaven to just down a highball after scarfing down some great takoyaki. Yeah, they really elevate each other. I get how you could lose yourself in it, Namba. And takoyaki goes well with almost any topping. Oh, I want to try them all. Got any recommendations, Sunhi? Hi. Hi, I totally hold cheese. Cheese and treats are a perfect match. Oh, jeez. Not you, too. This seaweed salad's got some crisp to it. Great texture. That's all thanks to the ogo. Ogo? Is that what this is called? Dang, the more you chew it, the tastier it becomes. If they sell it by itself, I'd love to take some back home. Or knock yourself out. But no matter what, don't try to harvest any from the ocean. You see, Ogo is actually poisonous. When you buy it from the store, it's safe. But if you eat that stuff unprocessed, you will get major food poisoning. Seriously? I wasn't planning on doing that, but good to know. Just like pufferfish, huh? Hey, for mushrooms and wildflowers, Namba would actually take a little nibble to test if they were edible. <laughs> that is a prime example of what not to frickin' do. I mean, what happens when it's inedible? He said he nearly became one with the universe once. He is more hardcore than I realized. Well, I mean, that guy's like a professional food taster. Don't even think about trying that at home. You don't need to tell me twice. Huh. This frozen dessert is really tantalizing. The outer shell is crispy. You've never had ice brulee before? I also didn't know what to think at first. It's caramelized on the outside, but cold and creamy inside. So it really is burnt ice cream. Oh, it cracked. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> if you're enjoying it so much, then the ice brulee must feel like it's fulfilled its purpose. Now oh, the burnt part really takes it to the next level. A savory, bittersweet taste really makes it irresistible. Now that I think of it, whenever Jungi eats fried rice, he really enjoys the burnt bits. <laughs> the heck? Is he still a kid? Well, I can actually relate to that. Whenever I get some of those crispy bits, it's like finding a little bonus in my bowl. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should keep a blowtorch on hand. Um, maybe it'd actually be best not to become a walking fire hazard. California rolls are pretty tasty, but the first time I saw one, I didn't even realize it was supposed to be sushi. <laughs> I remember people freaking out when they first started popping up at revolving sushi bars, but uh, now it's kind of a universal favorite. Isn't it awesome when places update their menu with what's trendy? Yeah, it definitely grabs your attention. I grew up on nigiri and traditional sushi rolls, so no way I'd ever think of something like a Cali roll. Sushi's probably gonna keep on evolving forever, huh? <laughs> yeah. Makes you wonder. Actually, the other day I glanced at an article that mentioned something called sushi bread. It was like regular sushi, but rolled in bread. Can it even be called sushi at that point? <laughs> Looks like anything flies in the sushi game these days. Maybe I should give it a shot and strike it rich. <laughs> Any, uh, bread ideas, Kasuga? Well, I'm a sucker for anything grilled, so something along those lines. Nice. I'm a fan of grilled fish, too. Especially flounder. So refined. If bread's fair game, 
I'd want to serve up something a little more appetizing, like, um, roasted tomato and cheese sushi bread. Oh, what do you think? Come on, man, isn't that just pizza? Whew. Those thick noodles coated in that rich broth. Pure bliss. Don't forget the veggies. They're tasty and healthy. You know, I've always thought Chompon was a really cute name for a dish. What's it mean, anyway? I think it refers to when a bunch of things are jumbled together. Maybe because you chomp on it all at once. Right. And isn't drinking a flight of different kinds of alcohol also called Chompon? Well, that'd jumble you up for sure. Then you could say our group is kind of like Chompon, too. Our backgrounds and titles are all so different. We've got a mafia leader, a former Yakuza chairman, and huh, even an ex-bum. Why couldn't you just call me an ex-nurse? Sounds like a world-class chompone to me. We're a healthy mix, too. Though if anyone tries to eat us, we're definitely the kind of dish that bites back. Talk about some killer ingredients. Oh, these sesame balls are to die for! I could eat a whole boatload. Just be careful, because these tend to be quite hot. I know, I know! I'm not a little kid! Uh, <gasps> ah, oh, the feeling! It burns! Hey, didn't a man just warn you? You don't have to rush right into... God, man, that's hot! Now look who's talking. Let me get some of those. Ah! <sighs> oh, jeez. Got me too. <sighs> All right, I've had enough of your silly gags. Can't we just enjoy this in peace? Ah! Oh. Oh. That's the hottest I've ever... How can something even be this hot? Ah! Oh. Talk about eating your words! Oh, that's the stuff. Actually, I could use another round. Stomach might be emptier than I thought. Don't push yourself. They say you should only eat until you're 80% full. Yeah, that's true. But still... I definitely went overboard. I thought soba by itself would be too light, so I got curry and katsudon too. But now I'm about to burst and I haven't even touched the katsudon. Wow, you really went for a full course meal. Should I go for broke or call it a day? Always a hard decision. Nanba, you're looking a little gaunt there. You want this katsudon, don't ya? What is this, an interrogation? Yeah, I'll take it. Guilty as charged. <laughs> Detective dramas never lie. The guilty just can't resist a hot meal. Hey, I always wanted to be the bad cop. Namba, stay put while I order up another katsudan. I only need one, damn it. And why am I always the criminal in your sick game of pretend? How the hell is cheese so good with alcohol? Right? You can pair it with wine. A match as old as time. Or even sake. Some hypotheses suggest that while we drink alcohol, our bodies naturally start to crave the essential amino acids found in cheese, which enhances our liver function. Cheese also helps to break down the alcohol and relieve fatigue, so that's another factor. Moreover, cheese is rich in calcium, which is believed to neutralize acidity in the blood. <sighs> Cheese and wine are one thing, Kasuga and learning's another. Why do I even bother? Mm, this kimchi fried rice is to die for. Apparently, this wasn't on their menu originally. They only added it after one of their regulars requested it. Hmm, I didn't know that kind of thing was even possible. It's pretty flexible for a restaurant. I wonder if they do the same for us if we become regulars. I can't help but wonder, though, how do you even become a regular in the first place? Just show up for a meal every day? Hmm, I assume it depends on the owner. If they remember you and you get to know each other, you might be able to call yourself a regular at that point. Be their friend, huh? But I have no idea how to relate to the owner here. Figure showing up to eat all the time seems like the best bet. Would you really go that far just to put something on their menu? 
I've only heard this in passing, but apparently the owner of this place used to be a part of some crazy biker gang. Get out of here. I can't imagine that just looking at the guy. Wonder what's the story behind that one. What if we rode in on tricked out choppers, dressed to the nines in leather? <laughs> Maybe then he'd tell us. It'd be like speaking his language. Oh, we should totally do that. If we want to get banned for life. Hmm, decisions, decisions. By the way, if you got him to put something special on the menu, what would it be? Hmm, I can't really think of anything. Then what's the point of all this? Mm, mm, mm. You know, I might have said this before, but there's nothing like red wine and meat. Agreed. Can't have one without the other. Yes, this has been quite enjoyable. And now, a light cocktail seems like the ideal finisher. Well, then let's order something. What should it be? Interesting. Whoa, man. <laughs> This is like 30 proof liquor. What happened to keeping it light? Oh, is that what we said? My bad. He's getting us absolutely wasted, part of some weird plan. You got it all wrong. I was just spacing out. <laughs> Leave it to old Jungi. He pounded that down without blinking. <sighs> He's sleeping with his eyes open. Oh, a Moscow mule. Not bad coming from you, Kasaga. What? What do you mean, coming from me? Ha, ah, now this is just what I had in mind. Not bad, indeed. <laughs> Glad I could deliver. One day, I hope I'll be classy enough to drink something like this and look natural. Hey, a man can dream, right? Maybe you'll even get to be as classy and refined as yours truly. <laughs> Find my ass. You look more at home with a cheap bottle of sake than a Moscow mule. I might have to agree. Meat's good and all, but sometimes you just need seafood. And Conroy here has some of the best squid in town. Yeah, what perfect texture. Great stuff. You aware the squid you love so much might have actually come from outer space? Uh, huh? You mean they're aliens? What the heck? Oh, I get it. It's because they look just like the Martians in those old movies and anime. Am I right? No. I'm talking a real deal scientific theory here. Their brains are pretty big compared to their bodies, and on top of that, they've got tons of nerves, most of which are gathered in their tentacles. So, it's said that each tentacle is kind of like its own computer that can operate independently of the main brain. I mean, that's nothing special. I can move my left and right arms independently. It's not a competition, you know. Squid's pretty different from anything else on Earth, so it's speculated they either came from space or evolved after coming in contact with an ancient virus from a meteorite. Crazy. Now that you mention it, I could see that. They really do seem otherworldly. I notice you have a penchant for tall tales, Jao. Where'd you hear this one? From a magazine I was flipping through at the convenience store. Pretty neat, huh? Well, that brought me right back down to Earth. <laughs> You're surprisingly gullible, Sachan. Well, whether you believe it or not is all on you. Personally, I don't care if they're from this planet or somewhere else, as long as they taste good. <laughs> Nothing like embracing diversity. By eating extraterrestrials? Man, nothing compliments a fat, juicy steak like some good old red wine. Almost as good as beer and barbecue. Yeah, something about meat and alcohol just works. Whether you're at a yakiniku spot or tossing one back at home. Supposedly, the strong flavor of steak elevates the robustness of red wine. They complement each other and in turn give the meal more depth. As a bonus, certain properties of wine help neutralize the steak's fattiness, making the dish even more palatable from there. Oh, makes sense. Guess it's the same story for beer and barbecue, then. Right. It's the grease on the meat that makes a dry, slightly carbonated drink like beer all the more refreshing. 
In fact, the other day, I saw a program that mentioned beer was voted as the best drink to pair with barbecue. Seems like there's a scientific basis for everything that's delicious. Steak and red wine, beer and barbecue. Uh, a bit like myself and Chitose. Well, what's that supposed to mean? What perfect chemistry? Come on, does it really need an explanation? <laughs> oh, God, no. You and me are nothing like steak and wine. More like oil and water. <laughs> huh? Hey, uh, how old is too old to be ordering a Lucky Meal? What's a Lucky Meal? It's a combo made for kids. Usually comes with a hamburger, dessert, and a toy. And during special promotions, they'll run out pretty quick. So it's basically a kid's meal, then. What brought this up? Attempting to relive your childhood all of a sudden? Uh, not exactly. But the toy they're giving out is based on a manga I read ages ago, so guess I was feeling nostalgic. Hey, I don't see any age limits posted. If you want one, why not go for it? There's already a sign up saying there are only a few left. What? Stuck wondering if it's weird for a grown-ass man to order a kid's meal? Don't feel bad, Nanchan. I accept you. Just because I want a kid's meal doesn't mean you have to treat me like a kid. If this is something you really want, go ahead. Just be aware of who these lucky meals are meant for. If ordering one for yourself meant taking it away from a child, I couldn't imagine living with the shame. Uh, yeah, I'm aware of that. Hey, it looks like they're down to the last one. It's now or never. Uh, Ooh, and there's a family at the register right now. What's it gonna be? You gonna make it happen? Uh, no. And sold. It was over so quick. <sighs> Fuck. You did good, Namba. That was a tough decision. Aw, oh, how about I buy you some dessert to make up for it? Ugh, why does everybody treat me like a kid? Oh, dessert sounds great, though. Talk about having your cake and eating it. He really went and did it, huh? Indeed. It's hard to believe what I just witnessed. Ain't no turning back now, friends. I've done the unthinkable. This kid's meal's all mine! I'm surprised they even let you order it. They didn't even bat an eye. Uh, there's an age limit right there on the menu. Guess that's ballsy in its own way. I'm determined to try everything once. But besides, it looks good, right? You can't just skip it because it's kids only. Mmm, you do have a point. Hamburg steak, fries, fried shrimp, chicken fried rice, dessert. <laughs> oh, I want some! Yep, a meal fit for champions. Now, I may be an old man, but I guess my tastes haven't aged one bit. Nothing wrong with old school cool on your plate. I don't know about cool. Yeah, the only thing is, I'd still be hungry afterwards. Well, it's a kid's portion after all. You gonna order seconds? No, I wouldn't go that far. What if they ran out or something? Taking food from kids is definitely not cool. <laughs> it looks like you're more grown up than I thought. <laughs> oh, nothing's more precious than a little one's smile, am I right? <laughs> Doesn't sound that heroic when your cheeks are stuffed with flan. <sighs> Beef bowls are a man's best friend. Super extra large is the only way to go. They live up to their slogan, tasty, quick, and cheap. I've been a loyal customer for as long as I can remember. <laughs> that catchy slogan sure gets stuck in your head. It sounds simple, but succeeding at all three is a challenge. Right, and they definitely live up to it. Wish I had a slogan, too. <laughs> you got an example? Mmm, something like... Speedy, strong, stupendous. Did you just come up with that on the spot? And why include speedy? Uh, speed on my feet? Duh. Fast runners are always popular. Uh, that's the logic of an elementary school kid. Plus, to be honest, I can't imagine you running fast to save your life, Nanchan. Yeah, I uh, won't lie, it's pretty accurate. So a no on that slogan for you. 
Kiryu-san's slogan be? Strong, somber, sentimental. Again, what was going through your mind for the last part? Um, what do you mean by sentimental? He must mean that Kiryu-san's old school, like what kids these days call a throwback? Oh, yeah, that's totally what I meant. I get the feeling that at this point, even you don't know what you're talking about. By the way, that slogan, you know, the word order actually changed over time. So, back in the day, it was quick, tasty, and cheap, since that was the process of how you'd experience the meal. But then they started to care more about the tasty part of their reputation. Oh, wow, I had no idea. So they switch it up to reflect the times. That's pretty cool. Yep, now that's what I call sentimental. Aw, nice try, but no. Man, Blue Mountain has got to be the king of coffees. And there's nothing like it. Why well, get that Blue Mountain is tasty, but what exactly makes it so different? There's plenty to point out, but the first is balance. Bitterness, sweetness, and acidity in complete harmony. The beans can only be harvested from a few exclusive locales, so you better believe it's rare and costly. And there's a trick to brewing it. Temperature of the water, coarseness of the grind, all of this affects the flavor. That reminds me, Junki, you're basically a coffee connoisseur, right? I suppose you could say that. Sunny is picky, so I amassed a wealth of knowledge while trying to suit her tastes. Ah, it's been quite the journey, adjusting my approach to cater to each and every brew. Now that's a capable right-hand man. Wait, so making coffee is part of the job description? So what kind of coffee is good enough for Sunny? Hmm? Blue Mountain? No, it actually turns out an original blend from the local supermarket is her current favorite, so she's set on that. Well, that's Sunny for you. You know what? Good for her. The cool thing about coffee is that every person can have their special favorite. I may have taken the long way around, but I still feel like it was worth gaining all this knowledge. Well, when it comes to learning how to brew a good cup, you'd certainly be my first choice as teacher. Ah, uh, it would be my pleasure. A strawberry parfait and a shortcake. Gotta say, that's quite the combo. I guess so, now that you mention it. I was really feeling strawberry, so I must have ordered both without thinking. Sorry about that. I let my desires get the better of me. It's nothing to worry about, but let's add a little something to break it up. All right, I'll make the order. Hmm, now what should I get? Ah, coffee's just the thing we needed. Bitter and sweet in perfect harmony. Yeah, matcha kind of works the same way, but, uh... It's kind of hard to pace yourself when you've got one cup of coffee for all that dessert. We'll need to be careful. I, uh, already downed mine. <sighs> so much for pacing it. Hot milk, huh? Well, as long as you don't add sugar, I think that'll complement things okay. A parfait, a cake, and now milk? It's like the Dairy Holy Trinity up in here. Sorry I was acting on impulse again. Want me to reorder? Huh? I already finished mine. But we just ordered! Kiryu-san, are you doing this on purpose? You just couldn't say no to more dessert, could you? My blood sugar's bad enough as it is. Sorry, it just sounded so good on the menu. It did say fresh strawberries, at least. Fresh is always good, yeah. That's not the problem here. Ah, <sighs> oh, well. I guess if Kiryu-san wants it, why not? <sighs> there goes my diet. Whoa! It's like the sea urchin and caviar are mingling in my mouth! <laughs> Mmm, the richness pairs really well with this crisp white wine. Mm, couldn't agree more. I'm especially loving the sea urchin. When it melts, the flavor takes over your tongue. You know, I hated this stuff as a kid. Hard to believe now, what with how much I love it. 
Well, they say taste buds mature as you age. I used to think raw veggies were too bitter as a kid. Now I eat them because they're bitter. It's literally an adult taste, huh? That makes me wonder if I might like things I wrote off back in the day. Right? So, Chitose, now that you conquered sea urchin, can you eat pretty much anything? Mmm, good question. Oh, well, well, uh, no way in hell I'm eating bugs, even if they're, like, stir-fried. Not gonna touch those creepy crawlies. Mm, don't see any bugs on this menu. Are you crazy? This is a French restaurant, dude. Oh, you know what? I happened to catch a big, juicy beetle on the way over. Here! Oh, wait, no! Do not bring that out under any circumstances! Even if he did, how would you even eat the dang thing? To think I could have Yukke Jung Gukbop in a place like this. Ah, <sighs> nothing like it. Huh, this place sure does have an international menu. Japanese style pickles, curry, even that Korean beef soup you ordered. You're right. Just shows we've got people from all over. Nah, these are just the mama here's favorites. She's got a pretty eclectic taste. Oh, really? Well, if she's serving food from all over, how about adding some Chinese to the menu? Maybe I'll teach her a recipe or two. <laughs> hey, good idea. What are you thinking? Mmm, fried rice, maybe chili shrimp. The stove at this place doesn't look too hot. If it ain't burning, it ain't real Chinese. We need big fire. Huh? You good? What's got you so worked up all of a sudden? That's probably just his inner pyro talking. He's not wrong, though. Guess Zhao will have to wait until they improve their stove. A worthy investment if this place wants to stay afloat. You guys, the mama's giving us the stink eye. At this point, we'll be lucky if they ever serve Chinese. <laughs> I wonder what they're bringing for dessert. I can hardly wait. Totally feel you. These full course meals make it exciting not knowing what you're gonna get. Oh, it's kind of like a mystery train ride. Mystery train? What's that? Oh, there was a time when travel agencies would offer tours, but the destination was kept secret on purpose. Oh, they were pretty trendy back in the day. Huh, it does sound familiar. You know, I actually went on one of those, come to think of it. Oh, you did? Was it fun? Well, it seemed like everyone and their grandma had a blast, but not me. Did something go wrong, Adachi-san? Motion sickness got you? Nah, it's just no fun when the destination ends up being your parents' neighborhood. Ooh. So, I visited my mom, she cooked me a meal, then I went home. It felt like your average visit. Man, that's like eating ice cream for breakfast, then finding out dessert is the same ice cream. <sighs> your analogies are terrible. Mmm, the crunchy fried chicken skin looks so good. Are you guys cool if I squeeze some lemon over it? Sure, thanks. Uh, no lemon for me. I'm good with it as is. I'll pass on the lemon, too. I think you're missing out with no lemon. It really adds to the dish, so it's a waste not to use it. What? Adds how? The juice draws out the natural flavors of the chicken. It also helps reduce your fat intake, so... Two birds, one stone. Is that right? I never knew. Flavor, huh? Uh, so who's do I need to put it on? Who wants lemon? Me. I'm out. Me. Never mind, I'm in. Actually, I'll pass. No, wait, I do want some. None for me. Gosh, you guys are a pain in the ass. Add your own lemon, then. Looks like you guys pissed her off. Whoops, sorry. Wait, Zhao, what do you mean, none for you? You were the one going on about it. Hey, I was just giving you the general opinion. Oh. Sorry about that, Psycho. I put more lemon on yours to make up for it. I didn't want lemon on mine! Huh? huh? Never would have guessed the edamame beer combo was a global hit. Don't tell me about it. The menu feels like it was lifted right out of a pub back home. 
And that being said, our edamame is usually just salted, but these are doused in garlic and sesame oil. Oh, gotta love the local flavor, right? That said, I, I can't, can't stop, stop eating. eating. Mm, there's some kind of beer and edamame magic going on. Mm, oh, my hands are moving on their own. Yeah, nice excuse there. Oh, don't pretend you haven't been stuffing yourself too, Tommy. Well, I mean, you said it yourself. They're irresistible. See? Now don't you go pointing fingers at us now. Wow, you guys are really losing your minds over edamame? Hold on. Where's mine? Huh, look at that. They're all gone. Guess we all uh, <laughs> kind of lost control there. It's hard to eat just one, you know what I mean? <gasps> you absolute swine! How dare you not save me any? Uh, don't we all get a share? Is that too much to ask? All right, let me fix this. Just hang on a sec. For the lady of the house. Hmm. <sighs> oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Ooh, who knew Chichan would grow horns and fangs over Edamame? Yeah, but now we've learned exactly how to bribe her. Uh, I'm sitting right here, morons, and I won't be swayed by some appetizer. But it's a good start. Just can't resist, huh? It's the power of finger foods, man. Man, I'm beat. Finally time to relax. Ah, so refreshing. Oh, come on. Don't just wipe your face with the hand towel. This place is high end. For the love of God, act like it. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Huh, that brings to mind, how does one act high end? Well, try to master acting normal first. But that's the hard part, isn't it? Normal is different depending on the person, like mannerisms, speech, and stuff. Whoa there, Nambukun. Be careful going down that rabbit hole. Next thing you know, you'll be questioning how to breathe. Hey, don't jinx me. Now I'm seriously worrying about it. Hmm. But when it comes to language, it pays to take your surroundings into account. Go on. For example, you might say, Oh my, this baguette has a delightful texture and aroma. It is simply divine, or something. Uh, you're joking, right? I'm not messing around. I just couldn't think of a good example on the spot. Baguettes aside, that's actually a good point, Saiko. Sometimes it's really important to read the room. Not that I'm an expert on that, of course. Well then, why don't we try acting classy from this point on? Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Sure. Classy. Uh... Uh... <sighs> <sighs> Guys, it's okay to speak. Uh, wasabi ahi poke. Ginger ahi poke. What the? What is ahi poke? I believe ahi refers to tuna. As for poke, um, I, I'm not quite sure, actually. Wouldn't you know, Tomizawa? Uh, of course. But let me turn that question back on you. What do you guys think it means? Ugh. What gifts? Uh, let me guess. When someone asks your age, you're the type who answers, How old do you think I am? Nobody likes a pain in the ass, man. Didn't you learn in school not to answer a question with another question? Hell no, I wasn't taught that. And what bugs crawled up your asses? Just give us an answer already, or I'll poke the living daylights out of you. <laughs> what does that even mean? Hey, good grief. Poke means the fish is diced up, so the tuna is just cut into small pieces. Oh, so that's what it is. Hmm. You learn something new every day, huh? Yes. Thank goodness Tomizawa-san is around for us to ask. We'll be relying on your knowledge. Acting like jerks one moment and gentlemen the next. I guess they were really hungry for the answer. Simple men with simple pleasures. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Kiryu-san? My cooking blowing your mind or what? As far as the taste goes, I'd say... I'm impressed. Well, get a load of you. You sounded like some food blogger for a second there. Anyway, by the look on your face, it's safe to assume you're enjoying it. Yeah, 
I'm kicking myself for missing out on such a delicacy after all this time. Glad I finally wised up. Hey, I'm just glad that I finally got the chance to cook for you. You're the real deal, you know that? It's easy enough to dream of a different life, but to create one, that takes metal. You're first class, as a leader and as a chef. Oh, really showering me with praise today, huh? You make a good point, though. Reflecting on all the hard work it took to get here just makes my current life as a chef even sweeter. But never lose sight of that. When you're lucky enough to find a home, you've got to do all you can to protect it. <laughs> if the dragon of Dojima speaks, I'd do well to listen. I'm going to take that advice to heart. But hey, not like I did all this for myself alone. I want this to be a place where everyone feels welcome. A chill-out spot. One where every face you see is a friend's. So, come by anytime you like. I'll whip up some grub that'll whisk away all your worries. That's so. Guess you found yourself a new regular. Yep. There's always gonna be a spot with your name on it. Still, I just gotta say... This meal, it's something else. Cold sake and sashimi over rice? This is exceptional. Who knew I could savor a treat like this so far from home? Hey, you can't beat fish and sake, right? My personal favorite's yellowtail and radish with hot sake. For when I want to indulge a little. I get you. That's a good one. Sake really brings out the flavor in fish, huh? Yellowtail's good stew, too. Personally, I prefer that over eating it raw. Yellowtail is a fatty species of fish, so it tends to be too rich for sashimi. That's why inada is recommended for raw consumption. Inada? That any different from yellowtail? On the contrary. Certain species, like yellowtail, are referred to by different names throughout their life cycle. In the Kanto region, they are called wakashi when small, then Inada and Warasa. After this stage, they can finally be referred to as Buri, or regular yellowtail. Furthermore, the names tend to be regional. Ah, oh, you're like a walking encyclopedia. Yeah, I bet you'd absolutely dominate as a contestant on one of those quiz shows. <laughs> Never would have guessed something like yellowtail ranks up as it gets older. Pretty cool for a fish. I've had this dragonfish on my back all this time. Maybe there'll be a time when my name will change, too. Mm, how do you mean? Well, I've been Ichiban Kasuga since I was born, so I've got to be at least Ichi Brawler or Ichi Badass by now. I can't tell if that's terrible or terrific. All right, Mr. Badass, I'll take the bait. If we're doing Sujimon names, that makes me Koichi Adachi, huh? <laughs> Adachi san, you've got to be drunk, right? I don't think you can just one up me. From now on, I'm Ichi Best Kasuga. <laughs> Can't top that. Oh, yeah? You better not underestimate the legendary beast, Koi Kamera Adachi. Gross. Thus began the world's most pointless competition. Ugh, I can't stand seeing drunkards argue. Um, more sake, please. Eat your best my ass. <laughs> no matter how high you climb, you will never reach Koi Kaiser Adachi. What the crap is a Kaiser? What language are you even speaking? Damn it, fine. All right, then I'll... Oh, the power of names is infinite. There's no end in sight. I've had about enough. No matter how much you two squirm, you'll never catch up to Chi Master Tose, patron of a thousand arts. Wait, you're tipsy too, Chitose? I've, I've been, been defeated. defeated. A spectacular battle for such a feudal rivalry. <sighs> the stew here is to die for. Ah, the ginger really hits the spot, doesn't it? Yeah. By the way, uh, hold on. What's up, Nanchan? I, uh, forgot what I wanted to say. What was it? It was on the tip of my tongue. Huh? You all right over there? 
Well, that makes sense. It's because you ate ginger, you know. Uh, explain? It's said that eating ginger makes you forgetful. <laughs> and Nambakun here was slurping it down like it's his last meal. So I guess the old adage is true. Wow, go figure. Ginger is actually proven to improve your focus. But it looks like that's not the case for Namba, huh? Well, if you forgot it immediately, it probably wasn't that important anyway. Huh. Oh, it just came to me. I was gonna say, you look funny with that grain of rice hanging next to your mouth, Sunny. Uh, oh, he's right. Ugh, you should have told me sooner. Not a bad look on you. See, remembering things is overrated. My bad. Ugh, just shut up and eat your ginger, and forget what you saw. This thing is bursting with green for a hamburger. Well, yeah, it's an avocado burger. It's healthy, it's tasty, and the sauce hits the spot. True, the avocado does have some kick, and even a bit of heft. <laughs> What's wrong, adachi san Not liking it? No, the burger's great, it's just that I've always thought guacamole was pronounced guacamole, and only just realized it now. I'm pretty sure I've been saying guacamole my whole life. Damn it all. Hey, don't let that get you down. At least you noticed eventually, right? Oh, this is actually the perfect chance to do an avocado quiz. <clears throat> Here we have the avocado, a vegetable, or a fruit. Uh, you're asking as if I knew shit. Just ask Kasuga. I'll not get off with the attitude, Adachi-san. Um, but now that I think about it, which is it? It's gotta be... a fruit! Correct! Nice job! Well, in some countries it might be considered a vegetable, but at least in Japan, it's a fruit. Same as how tomatoes are considered either a vegetable or fruit depending on the country. I thought avocados were a vegetable. Everything I ever knew was a damn lie. Oh no, I've made it worse. Hey, cheer up. We never truly stop learning in life. Heck, I've learned a ton of new things since I got here. Just think of it as earning more EXP. Kasuga, <laughs> ah, you got some wisdom in you. You're right. I should keep my chin up. Now that's the spirit of Dachi-san. Such passion, all because of some avocado. So, let's get smart and chow down on some health food. I'm going all in on this burger with extra guacamole. Ah. Um... Ah, oh, so close. I knew it! I'm a wreck! <sighs> Adachi-san... Man, I just can't resist a combo of rice and yakiniku. I got you. It's a match made in heaven. Mm, that does sound good. But have you ever tried bibimbap? Now that is heaven. Yeah, that does sound tempting. But you're pretty greedy, Sachan. Ordering two main dishes? What? No, I just meant either one is good. Then what do you think about eating rice with bibimbap as a side dish? Wouldn't that be like eating okonomiyaki with rice? The amount of carbs alone would make that immoral. Not that I'd complain. Okay, then one order of rice and bibimbap for Sachan. Hey, no, I, I don't want that. I'll get fat. Anyway, that's not what I meant at all. Guys, this is our chance to finally enjoy some barbecue together. Let's just order some meat. Mmm, this cashew chicken's so good. Really can't get enough. So we came all the way to Hawaii just to chow down on Chinese food, huh? Actually, cashew chicken started in the States. I read that in an article online. Yeah? Do tell. To sum it up, it was actually Chinese immigrants in America who invented and popularized the dish. You don't say. I guess every dish has a unique history. You know, crab omelet on rice is also considered Chinese, but it first popped up in Japan. Cuisine travels far and wide, huh? Hey, wherever it came from, all I know is, mm, mm, it's tasty. Mm. Now, let's pay our respects to these innovative chefs and carry on their legacy oh, by enjoying every last bite. Nice speech there. 
Too bad you had to ruin it by stuffing your face like a pig. Mm. Oh. Mm. oh, sorry. I couldn't resist. It was just sitting there, calling to me. Shameless, that man. Something about fried rice really takes me back. Actually, I just remembered. It was a cold winter night. Whoa! Does he normally start monologuing out of nowhere? Back when I was an officer. I was out with a colleague of mine and we ordered fried rice to share. Ah, we were just a couple of rookies at the time with hardly a yen to our names. And can you believe it? The bastard ate all the shrimp! And there was barely any to begin with! Ah, one thing led to another and then we were treating blows! So what happened next? Well, the restaurant banned our dumbasses, that's what. Can't say that I didn't see that coming. That's a damn tragedy. Realizing I'd never taste that fluffy, buttery bowl of heaven again. But, as luck would have it, one day I was finally reunited with the dish of my dreams. The restaurant lifted the ban? Oh, nah. I ended up making a perfect recreation after stumbling upon this Chinese seasoning I scored from a local supermarket. <laughs> Oh. Well, it was a heartwarming lesson in my life. I realized then that a rose really could grow from a crack in some cold, hard concrete. That make you all warm and fuzzy inside, Tommy? Right now, the only thing that'd make me warm and fuzzy is never hearing him again. Whoa, what's going on here? This table's full of tomatoes. Look, tomato brioche, bouillabaisse. Even the risotto hasn't been spared. Now that you mention it, you're right. And isn't tomato jam kind of rare? Never had it before now. Oh, it's the best! Uh, and with cheese? Forget about anything else. Well, I thought tomato and cheese was exclusive to pizza. Uh, but I guess it makes sense they'd match up well elsewhere. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Man, it's all so sweet and tangy. Hard to even describe. I'm not even a fan of tomatoes. But this is something else. I could eat this non-stop. Huh. You look like you'd be a tomato lover, though. And that means what, exactly? Hey, I just thought of something. Making jam out of foods you don't like might make them easier to enjoy. You know, now that you mention it, Namba did tell me he hates dried mackerel. Maybe he'd enjoy it more in a spread or a dip. What, are we applying demon fusion logic to food now? This omerice is next level. So tender. Yeah, the chef's got great technique. They sure know their stuff. Whenever I see omerice, I'm always reminded of the maid cafe that I used to visit with a former coworker. Oh, right. How could you not associate maid cafes with omerice? The maids draw on it with ketchup for the customers. But from your tone, it doesn't sound like you had a good experience with it. That's not it. Considering my age, I just feel like I embarrassed myself when I did the little chant, you know? The one that supposedly makes the food taste better. By the end of it, I wanted to crawl into a hole and disappear. Oh, I cringe hard each time I remember it. Hmm, I forgot that you can be kind of self-conscious like that, Nanchan. To improve the taste? Wait, what's this chant you mentioned? Yeah, there are words you chant in unison with the maid while you make a heart with your hands. Well, you know about it too, right, Kiryu-san? Huh? It's gotta be. Come on, get tasty. Pretty, pretty, please. Wow, you actually got it right. It's amazing how you didn't hesitate even for a second. Well, you know how it is. Who wouldn't enjoy their meal when given a show like this? A chant infused with the power of the dragon of Dojima himself. Hey, we all gotta go together sometime. Nanchan can finally redeem himself. Let's all go pretty pretty please. You make it seem like I lost all my dignity back at that maid cafe. I'll be your moral support. Huh? For real, Kiryu-san? What the hell? Why not make a better memory with everyone? All right, to the maid cafe! Yeah! yeah! Well, <laughs> with this level of intensity, they might think we came to start a war. 
Something like, get tasty, I know you can do it. I mean, I'm sure the Omerice would feel very encouraged, but you do know it's supposed to be a chant, right? Mm, that's not it. Hey, we all gotta go together sometime. Nanchan can finally redeem himself. Let's all go pretty pretty please. You make it seem like I lost all my dignity back at that maid cafe. I'll be your moral support. Huh? For real, Kiryu-san? What the hell? Why not make a better memory with everyone? All right, to the maid cafe. Yeah! yeah! Well, <laughs> with this level of intensity, they might think we came to start a war. <laughs>